Hello, and on this windy day today, we consider the investment case for silver. We give you five reasons to buy it and five reasons not to. One day, it will go to the moon. It has close ties with that planet after all. The question is whether it's worth the wait. One day and within reasonable investment time horizons are not the same thing. A reasonable investment time horizon might be three years, ideally less. One day, could be a lifetime away, or more. This is something I've said many times. There is probably no investment with as much potential as silver, except perhaps some little-known tech that neither you nor I can understand. Yet, there is no investment more frustrating. And with that in mind, today, here are five reasons to buy silver and five reasons not to. Balance is everything after all. And we start with why you should go all in and buy. Number one, silver is cheap. The all-time high for silver was $50 an ounce, a price set long ago in the mists of time, well in 1980. $50 was subsequently retested in 2011 and the retest failed. Today, silver sits at $22.50, that's 55% lower. Is there any other asset, let alone a commodity, that is trading at such a discount to its all-time highs, especially with all the currency debasement that has gone on? It is so cheap. Number two. Silver should be much more expensive. There's roughly 15 times as much silver in the Earth's crust as there is gold. Thus, the silver price should be 1 15th the gold price. Indeed, that is the historical average. Gold is 15 times more expensive. And by historical average, I mean throughout all history, in ancient Mesopotamia, ancient Greece, the Dark Ages, the Middle Ages, the early modern era, era right up to the 20th century. Today, the gold price is 79 times the silver price. A return to the historical average would mean silver five times higher, north of $100 an ounce. And that's assuming there's no appreciation in the gold price. What is more, silver gets consumed and so no longer exists. Gold does not. It lasts. And thus, really, the ratio should be lower than 15. Number three, the silver price is suppressed, so the story goal goes. The amount of silver sold forward on the COMEX amounts to more than one year's supply. In other words, the silver that has been sold cannot be delivered. Sooner or later, this means there is going to be a run on physical silver and the price will go bananas. Number four, silver has myriad uses. It is the best thermal and electrical conductor of all metals. So every phone, every computer, every TV, every decent battery, every photovoltaic cell contains silver. Before the invention or discovery of antibiotics, silver was the world's most important antimicrobial agent. These antimicrobial non-toxic qualities means it has huge demand in medicine and consumer products, products from biocides to fridges to paint. Its high reflectivity means it has demand in jewellery, silverware, mirrors and solar energy. It's malleable and ductile, which means it can be beaten into sheets, drawn into wire, reduced into nano-silver or turned into paste and thus a plethora of industrial applications require it. Then there are its catalytic properties, which means it finds use in plastics, nuclear energy, the brazing and soldering, its photosensitivity. In short, it is nothing short of amazing how many uses this incredibly versatile metal has. If you want a picks and shovels play on cutting edge technology and man's never ending progress, surely silver is it. Everything uses it. Number five, silver is money. The word even means money. A pound was once a pound of sterling silver. Argent is silver. Plata is silver. In this age of relentless currency debasement, money printing and inflation, you need to protect yourself. Silver, as a monetary and precious metal, does that. And now for the rebuttals. Five reasons not to buy silver. Number one, silver isn't cheap. 
Those two all-time highs are illusory figures. The 1980 high came at the end of the inflation of the 1970s when the Hunt brothers infamously attempted to corner the market, triggering a panic. The 2011 high came after a speculative frenzy accompanied by a false silver shortage narrative at the end of a decade-long bull market. While those highs do show what's possible, they mean nothing. Two, ratios don't matter. Who cares what the historical average is? There may be 15 times more silver in the Earth's crust, but it's a lot easier to mine than the gold is. In most, indeed, most silver is produced as a byproduct of mining for other metals, zinc especially. Many of the world's largest silver producers are not even silver companies. Glencore, Cadelco, Vedanta, Hindustan Zinc, that is, Southern Copper, Polymetal, Newmont. Silver makes up such a small part of their revenue that the price is almost unimportant. The market sets the price, not the Earth's crust. Number three, silver isn't being suppressed. Price manipulation stories have been doing the rounds since the 1970s. They've lost their credibility. The derivatives market is always bigger than the physical market. If you looked at the magnitude of the global derivatives market, you would be packing your bags, your tins, your guns, and making for the hills tomorrow with lots of silver coins. It's only when you realize most derivatives cancel each other out that calmness can return. If the price is suppressed, there's nothing you can do about it anyway. Only worry about what you can affect, standard sports psychology. Let nefarious silver price manipulation narratives be somebody else's problem. Number four, silver is useful, but you don't need much. Yes, silver's myriad uses are amazing, but the amount of silver required for pretty much all of them is minuscule, so it doesn't have much impact on prices. Current physical supplies meet demand, particularly when you factor in recycling. If there was a genuine shortage, you'd know about it pretty quickly. There isn't. That is why the price is low. Number five, money has moved on. Silver may have been money once upon a time, but it isn't now. It hasn't been money for a hundred years or more, and it's unlikely to ever be again. It's as irrelevant to money as the horse is to transport. Money is no longer physical metal. It is digital, and cryptocurrencies are the money of the future. Metal isn't. As for being a hedge against inflation, silver's been useless. How much money has been printed since 1980? How much currency has been debased? And silver is trading at the same price it was 40 years ago. Come off it, it's been a rotten inflation hedge. Cool, it's windy. And so there we have it. Five reasons to own silver and five reasons not to. How about that for balance? I will say this, I own silver. I don't think I've ever known an investment with as much potential but here's the thing, it never delivers. It's like that talented genius you know. They could do anything, anything they wanted, but they always find a way to screw up. You can only look at them, shake your head and go, if only. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. I'll be back with another video very soon. In the meantime, cheerio. Oh, it's cold. Oh, it's windy.